Good Saturday morning, everyone. Today on Perspectives, making our community the best place to live, work, and play. Well, it's a simple statement, of course, that usually gets your attention when an elected official or a community leader says it. But how does a community, a city, a county really make it happen? With a startup grant from the J.L. Bedsoe Foundation, the Coastal Alabama Partnership created and developed a platform, Coastal Conversations. The mission is to increase civic awareness and engagement across our region and to address the challenges in our community. Coastal Conversations produced a two-county quality of life survey, which measured the residents' feelings about life in coastal Alabama. The next step, select and schedule world-class experts who would share their expertise with the community on the survey's critical issues like diversity and inclusion, social justice, health, education, workforce development, and housing, just to name and mention a few. Coastal Conversations was launched 18 months ago, unbelievably in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. But with today's technology like Zoom, YouTube, and Facebook, and safe virus protocols, nine experts were hosted in programs focused on the issues and problems of our community. Coastal Conversations is set for another series of programs starting next month in August, again featuring world-class experts who will address the issues that the quality of life survey shows are of interest to our coastal Alabama community. Our guest this morning, Dr. Michael Chambers, Associate Vice President for Research at South Alabama and Executive Director of Coastal Conversations, and Chris Lee, Executive Director of the J.L. Betso Foundation. Coastal Conversations, a program that has a simple goal to make our region the best place to live, work, and play. We'll find out how successful the first 18 months have been and what's ahead in the next series of programs when Perspectives continues after this quick break. So let's first, before we get into what's going on right now, let's talk a little bit about uh, what Coastal is, and then tell us about what happened these last two years. Well, first of all, thanks for having us on the show again, and it has been a uh, very interesting 18 to 20 months. So <laughs> we launched about 18 months ago. The Coastal Conversations is a program of the Coastal Alabama Partnership led by Wiley Blankenship. And uh, really, Coastal Conversation is mirroring a program in Pensacola called Civicon, uh, and they've been very helpful in launching it. But our mission is really threefold. One, we want to bring world-class speakers to this area. We have created a community dashboard, a free one, of key metrics on things like crime, education, uh, water quality, for example, uh, and then a survey. So each year, last year we had a survey, this year we're gonna launch one in August. Mm -hmm. We interview 700 respondents, 350 from Mobile County, 350 from uh, Baldwin County. And really it's, Eric, it's about, you know, what are your concerns, what do you think the problems are? And we let the data from the dashboard and that survey mm -hmm. drive the programming. When you, look at, <clears throat> when you look back at the speakers that you brought in, did they, address those points that you were hoping for? Were they able to give those uh, areas of concern a real good shot in the arm, I guess you could say. Well, uh, and I know Chris Chris can talk about uh, the basics in a second, but yes, they did. And we don't control the content when we bring in the speakers. We identify what the problem is, either because of the facts or what people perceive the problem mm -hmm. to be. So if you look at, uh, we've had nine speakers in 18 months. We've had three speakers kind of on downtown issues. We had Chuck Marone on what to invest in. We had Tom Murphy, former three-term mayor of Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh come in and talk about the Renaissance. We had Clyde Higgs, who is the director of the Atlanta Beltline. He came in and talked about that project, but of course that directly impacts the Three Mile Creek project mm -hmm. that's being considered now. We had uh, put together a panel on how to build a bridge, and basically what that panel said is what we're uh, adopting now. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, all are very concerned about the quality of life here. We had a gentleman named Costas Christ, who just revisited recently, uh, come and speak on ecotourism. So th those facts and that data directly derives the programming. How many of those speakers were here in Mobile? How many were able to be here? Most of them, ultimately. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, trying to remember. I know our very first one, Ron Ferguson from Harvard, was our launch 
on uh, health care disparities. That one was, in uh, fact, uh, by Zoom. Okay. And so that was a very interesting but Zoom worked for mm. the beginning of the program. Yes, it did. It did. Yeah. We, we uh, and of course, being at the University of South Alabama, I had to kind of launch into that with classes too. So that was, <laughs> gave me a little bit of a leg <laughs> up, but practice, yeah. it was a very interesting experience. Chris, tell us before you uh, share more on that, why you saw this as worthwhile for the J.L. Betzel Foundation to be a catalyst for this happening here? Well, the J.L. Betzel Foundation, really the pillars of our investment are health education and welfare of the citizens of Southwest Alabama. So following the model of uh, civic conversation in Pensacola, the mission is really a, a more engaged citizenry will be allowed for more effective governance. So we wanted people to be informed on topics and we, we brought the subject matter experts to them based on their concerns from survey data. So it's been data driven. Mm -hmm. And one side note about the uh, starting in Zoom and uh, how we have to adapt with the pandemic, it forced us to get very savvy on the use of social media. So we were broadcasting live, we were rebroadcasting it on our Facebook page. So we really use social media a lot, which allowed for follow-on content and discussion. Yeah, that's a very important tool these days that uh, is always in the conversation, so to yes. speak. When you look back at what happened these last 18 and 24 months, have you been overall pleased with the results that you can see? And, and how do you see some of those results? Well, why don't I start and you, you finish? I think it's been a great success so far. We've had overwhelming positive uh, comments about the speakers, suggestions for speakers, people wanting to host uh, and partner with us. So in terms of success, it has been great. We didn't start with the premise that we're going to bring someone here and then we, Coastal Conversations, are going to execute on the idea. But I think as Chris will tell you, what we hoped was by bringing these people in, certain positive things would happen. Certain groups who could take on the project could take them on armed with these facts. So Chris, you want to elaborate? Yes, I'll give you three examples. So our lead speaker, Dr. Ron Ferguson, and his uh, he created a, a program called The Basics, which is uh, focuses on mothers and their newborn children from zero to three, and it, it addresses the problem of, of uh, education disparities. And so he, what Dr. Ferguson says, it's too late to start addressing this in middle school. It's even too late to address it in uh, kindergarten mm. because 80% uh, of a child's brain growth is zero to three. So he, his program laid out how you can implement this on a community basis. So we're very fortunate that using that model, all of our healthcare providers are on board. Uh, our As major in hospitals. Including the medical. The, me the whole medical community mm -hmm. is on board. The United Way of Southwest Alabama is interviewing now. They will act as the program coordinator. So the plan is to launch this in the fall. That will coincide with a return of Dr. That's Ferguson. exciting. So it's a, it's a long haul proposition. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to echo what Michael said. It's successful, but all we're doing is planting seeds. Right, right. right. Yeah, you're the uh, fire starter, so to speak. Right. And that's <laughs> exciting because your data from the survey has told you some of the concerns. And both of you being in the circles and the uh, parts of the community where you sort of have a feel about certain things anyway, of what you'd like to see improve and be better for the community. So I think when you combine all of that, uh, it's exciting to understand that these speakers are coming in to set the fire among the folks that you made sure hopefully were there right. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that you could get them to see the bigger picture and the possibilities of what could be ahead for the community. So um, I give you kudos on that. You know, I, one thing that's really important to us is that we want the uh, citizens of our area to know about the facts and that these activities are driven by facts, not rhetoric. Mm -hmm. uh, because we've seen a lot of cases in the past in our community where mm -hmm. a lot of the activities were driven uh, you know, by rhetoric, sometimes political rhetoric, rhetoric mm -hmm. and having just the facts and how other people have done it in other places successfully 
uh, has shown us it makes all the difference in the world. We've got about 30 seconds before our first break here. How have those mm -hmm. leaders responded to it? Because they have to come to the table also. Well, you want to talk about the United Way? Well, the United Way, um, they have 47 agencies in here, and their executive director, Jill Chenoweth, immediately identified with this program because <coughs> she's had a professional interest in early childhood development mm -hmm. her whole career. Right. So she saw this as a vehicle that we could harness all the good that her agencies are doing. So it's as much a social services initiative as it is an education issue. Hole right there, and we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about coastal conversations and the year ahead of us here as far as who we expect to hear from. Perspectives continues in just a moment. Welcome back to Perspectives. This morning we're talking to Dr. Michael Chambers and Chris Lee. Coastal Conversations. And Chris, you talked about United Way there briefly. Uh, you said there were three examples you wanted to give us. Two more quickly? Yes. Uh, so we had talked, we had a, a Costas Chris, who was a speaker in our first year, speaking about ecotourism and how we're really surrounded by one of the largest watersheds in the yes. Mobile Delta. Well, anyway, he just came back and uh, Coastal Alabama Partnership had funded him to come up with an ecotourism plan. So this was rolled out at the Five Rivers Delta Center mm. just in the last two weeks. So it's within the first year we've seen a, a, a product uh, out of this also. And then of course the basics is returning and then the other one I talk about is the uh, Atlanta Belt Line and Three Mile Creek. So that's more or less energized yes. uh, the, the efforts to access the federal funds that have been approved. And this was sort of the <clears throat> expectation you all had when you put this together was that yes. you would see some tangible results and I think those are fairly quick ones that happened, don't you think? I, I think so. I, okay. They're not they're not as far right. along as they could be, but as we talked about earlier, it's planting the seed and getting all the key stakeholders together and just making resources available so to get the ball rolling. I think uh, another program that really harnessed local talent was um, it was a panel discussion on the retention of mm. young talent in our community. So it was young people, mm -hmm. young professionals in their 30s, and one I think in his upper 20s. But it was moderated by Mobile's own Cam Marston, who has quite an audience, mm -hmm. um, and he specializes in demographic trends of young people. So that panel was really good, yeah. and I think there were a lot of aha moments. Mm. And we had one of our largest in-person attendances for that one, and then also a good viewership on the reprogramming oh, on awesome Facebook. To hear. And where are you holding these now that you've got people coming in to Mobile? Right. So we, we tried to jump around a little bit to pull in different parts of the communities. Okay. So uh, for we've had them at Gulf Quest, Burn Hall at Spring Hill, the McQueen Center at South, um, the uh, downtown library. So we've jumped around in a lot of different That's places. Nice. The uh, We have a program coming up on August 11 with uh, Dr. Tom Shaw of the University of South Alabama. He will release and explain the survey results. Mm -hmm. uh, that one will be at Gulf Quest on August 11th at 11.30. It's a luncheon. luncheon. Um, and then we have some other programs in the fall lined up as well. Any of those mm -hmm. you want to share with us as far as maybe subject matter? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, Dr. Shaw will explain what people are really thinking. On August 30, we have a great speaker, Shane Phillips. He's from UCLA, written a book called Affordable Housing. And so one of the key issues in this area and in throughout the United States right now is affordable housing at multiple levels. He'll be here on August 30. That's at Gulf Quest 1130 luncheon. So it's kind of first come, first serve. Uh, then we have a September program that's yet to be confirmed. It's a surprise speaker. Everybody in your listening audience <laughs> will know this person. Right. Uh, we expect that person to pack the house. Uh, and then in October, October 18th, uh, venue to be decided, we have Dr. Ron Ferguson from Harvard coming back for what we uh, believe will be the actual launch of the basics program that Chris described. So it's a, it's a killer uh, format for the fall. Mm -hmm. We expect the November program to be on uh, we're vetting some world-class speakers now on how to manage rapid growth mm -hmm. because it's certainly a key issue in both Mobile and Baldwin County. When you look at what has happened the last three years, <coughs> excuse me, 
did the survey data change a little bit considering we've been through the pandemic and still going through of course and then with the economic situation that's happened the last uh, what six seven eight months did the survey data change a bit you think based on circumstances for people right now well <clears throat> Chris you chime in but I think what we expect from the first year and the second year uh, public safety or crime uh, and traffic are two big issues that didn't really change what appeared to change as we hit the pandemic and we're coming out of it is a really deep concern on retention of talent mm -hmm. uh, just because of the problems that we all know about. Chris, can you think of anything else along those lines? No, I think that's it. I think surprisingly on, on some of the data is that the economic hardship did not place as high as we may have thought, may have perceived it to be. And I think part of that was the federal response on the individual and the corporate uh, stimulus. Now, of course, it's being argued, was that a contributory to inflation? But there is no doubt that public safety is has really risen to the top of everyone's list. Now, if I remember correctly, you had Cedric Alexander in, or Zoom, I don't remember. No, he was live. Okay, he was here in the area. And of course, he's a familiar face to people that watch the uh, news channels. Um, having served in the Atlanta area, so he has a first-hand knowledge of a metropolitan area and an urban area. Are you anticipating bringing him back or someone else who we may be familiar with to tackle that? Because now the uh, Mobile Police, they have an initiative along with the Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. So our law enforcement agencies are looking at how we better tackle that problem. It's not just a uh, policing issue. No. We, we absolutely expect if, if we want to bring Dr. Alexander back and we may bring some additional people back. We will be working with the city, uh, the mayor's office and the city council, both of whom have been extremely supportive of the program to identify speakers that uh, to take the initiative that they're looking mm -hmm. at and see if we could bring in someone who might uh, provide additional resources for them. So the answer is absolutely. Is the word getting out enough? Do you have uh, enough channels to get this word out? Because it seems to me that anyone who is concerned about the community would want to be a part of this and be there. We can always have more. <laughs> <laughs> we really appreciate you having us on. Oh, of course, of course. When you look at um, where we're going here in, say, the next year, what, uh, what are your feelings as you all evaluate the program and, and see <clears throat> what direction? Are you working with the Studer Foundation in Pensacola somewhat? We, we started working, uh, really, they helped us okay. uh, get off the ground. So okay. we have worked with uh, uh, Quinn Studer as well as mm -hmm. Terry Horn, who runs the program in Pensacola, mm -hmm. and they have been uh, very, very helpful. Because they have critical. a media profile also, so I anticipate seeing you two on television hosting a program. Uh, <laughs> that'll be Chris. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, uh, have been helpful. In fact, our affordable housing speaker that's coming at the end of August is appearing in Pensacola the day before. So that's an example of, so we've been able to share expenses and uh, talent and <coughs> the scheduling of this individual. So uh, they, they couldn't have been more helpful. Well, I think that's a great sister city uh, relationship there because they've, you can see some things that have happened there and the visual changes that have been made over the last, say, 10 years. And to have someone of uh, the Studer's uh, interest in their city, uh, have we had someone come forth like that, uh, an individual who can be a, a mover shaker, who can, uh, inject some things and people can understand they can talk to that person face to face has well, that happened well i i would uh, put i'm not going to put chris on the spot but i would say <laughs> the the bedsoe foundation has been very critical mm -hmm. in helping launch this program and the leadership of the with the foundation chris as well as best reward and of course the cap board yes. but uh to your point uh we would certainly love to have more individuals step forward in sponsorships we've been very lucky with this, the mayor the city council the porch band of creek indians and a host yeah. of other sponsors that have been very helpful. Yeah. 
Well, gentlemen, time uh, never gives us enough to be able to share and tell about everything, but I appreciate you both being with us this morning, and hopefully you've planted some more seeds today that will encourage some of those leaders and future leaders who are watching to be a part of this coastal conversation. And we thank you for doing what you're doing. No, thank, thank you. you. We really thank appreciate you very much. it. Dr. Michael right. Chambers and Chris Lee, thanks for being on Perspectives. And we'll tell you more information how to contact the organization as well as how to get that schedule of the upcoming speakers coming to our area. And don't forget, Coastal Conversations is free and open to the public. The next event, once again, is August the 11th, and registration is open right now. Now, you can check out their website at coastalcon.org or check out their Facebook page as well. Now, the Coastal Conversations office is on St. Louis Street in downtown Mobile. The number to call, 251-436-8822. Well, it's been a fixture in Mobile sports history since 1948. Ladd People Stadium has hosted college football games, the Senior Bowl, and local high school football games for more than 70 years. But it may have gone through more changes in the last two years than ever before in its history. The teams have come and some games have moved on to newer venues, but the stadium is still standing and revamping its offerings to the Gulf Coast sports community. A professional football team uh, will play games there starting next month, and future college players will tweak their skills at LAD in preparation for gridiron opportunities after high school. There will also be concerts and thrilling amusements on the LAD people's entertainment schedule. We'll talk to the new manager about the stadium's rebirth next up on Perspectives. So please join us here next Saturday morning at 9 a.m. for another edition of Perspectives. I'm Eric Reynolds. Have a great week ahead. Thanks for watching Fox 10 News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, our streaming news app, and you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.